A thousand years after the modern human race went extinct and deadly machines took over the world, an outcast named Alloy was born with the help of a machine in the Nora tribe of the reborn human race. Alloy is a clone of Elizabeth, a former scientist which created Alloy with the purpose of saving humanity from extinction in the future. Growing up as an outcast, Alloy saved the human race from destruction by a rogue AI called Hades. The land is dying once again. Vicious storms and an unstoppable blight ravage the scattered remnants of humanity, while fearsome new machines prowl their borders. Life on Earth is hurtling towards another extinction, and no one knows why. It's up to Aloy to uncover the secrets behind these threats and restore order and balance to the world. She sets out on a journey to the lands of Forbidden West to find an AI called Gaia, which can help her control the environmental disasters occurring in the world and save humanity. On her way she unites with an old friend named Varl, whose family she saved in the past, and Varl decides to return the favor by assisting Alloy in her quest. She hands him over a device called Focus, through which Varl can see the marks and signs which Alloy sees left by the previous generations. As they both make their way through a valley, they come across the holographic message of Oswald, a man representing the organization by the name of Farzanith. It is revealed that the Farzanith has stolen a copy of Gaia to create a live able environment on a planet called Sirius. So that they can transport the world elites there with the help of a ship called Odyssey. Alloy reveals that the ship never made it to Sirius planet and blew up in the space due to some unknown reasons. Alloy decide to head towards the data center in the ruined city, on the way she is attacked by a giant robot serpent and after defeating it she reaches the data center, in hoping to recover the stolen copy of Gaia. Upon reaching, she finds a message from Travis Tate, a hacker responsible for protecting Gaia and he reveals that Farzanith has not stolen Gaia, but a fake copy of it which is actually a virus. Disappointed, Alloy and Varl decide to head to the Kajarn tribe to seek help from spymaster Murad in finding Silens, an old ally which helped Alloy destroy Hades. Upon reaching Kajarn, Murad asks Alloy to investigate a spire tower which has been transmitting signals to somewhere. As Alloy reaches the top of the tower, she is contacted by Silens, who reveals that he has saved Hades with him somewhere in the Forbidden West and he has discovered information on Gaia. Althug Alloy is angered at Silens for hiding this from her, she decides to travel to the Forbidden West with Varl. Aloy and her friend Varl cross into the west to find the ruling Tanakh tribe in the midst of a civil war between Chief Hekaro, and the rebel leader Regala. Silens is tracked down by Aloy, who discovers Hades severely damaged and permanently deletes it. When she attempts to restore a Gaia backup without its supporting subsystems, a gang of futuristic humans from the Far Zeniths organization stop her. The crew, which consists of their boss Gerard, his lieutenant Tilda, Enforcer Eric and Elizabeth clone dubbed Beta is equipped with cutting-edge technology that makes them immune to harm. Aloy just about makes it out alive with Minerva, one of the Gaia's subordinates, as the group of futuristic humans take a second Gaia backup. Varl rescues her from the shores and bring her to a nearby tribe called Utaru. As Aloy's wakes up, she is informed that the Utaru tribe knows of a cave which is guarded by the robotic beasts, hinting towards a possible Gaia location. Aloy meets with Zo, a member of the tribe. Alloy helps fix one of the Utaru tribe's protector machines and Zo agrees to guide her to the cave. After that Zo confesses her love to Varl and asks him to aid her in a quest, to which Varl refuses to go with her, claiming that he needs to stay with Alloy. Alloy asks him to go with Zo and promises that she will meet them once they have prepared the completed their quest. Varl agrees and sets out with Zo to Plainsong. Soon they reunite with Alloy and the trio embark on their journey towards the cave. The group make their way through the cave after fighting several beasts, and Alloy reaches the core of the base, where she activates Gaia with the help of Minerva. Gaia then reveals the location of three more subordinates to Alloy, namely Aether, Demeter and Poseidon. She informs Alloy that in order to restore Gaia in power she will need another subordinate called Haphestus, but to find it, she must need the three subordinates she mentioned earlier. Aloy then head towards the Tenneth tribe, to retrieve Aether from the chamber under the tribe's throne. There she meets with the tribe's chief named Hekaro. As she asks him to give her access to the chamber, Hekaro demands her to persuade Tekote of the Sky Clan to send his best warriors to participate in the Kulrut combat trial, so Hekaro can unite his tribe against their enemy Regal, which is planning to attack the tribe at the Kulrut event. Kotalo and the outlander Aloy were sent to convince Tekote to send champions, unconvinced by an outlander and a maimed marshal, Tekote smugly replied that no champions would be sent as long as the Sky Clan remained safe behind the bulwark. His challenge was met, using a tremor tusk cannon, Aloy shot a power cell buried in the bulwark, bringing down a portion of the wall and ending Tekote's sneers. Forced to accept his vulnerability, the commander begrudgingly sent champions to the Kulrut. As Hekaro predicted, Regala attacked the Kulrut. When Regala reached Hekaro, 
the two dueled once more. Hekaro gained the upper hand but faltered when the jet above the throne began to fall. His life was saved by the quick thinking of Aloy, who redirected the jet to fall in between Regala and Hekaro, forcing Regala to retreat. With Aloy having fulfilled her end of the bargain, Hekaro fulfilled his, granting Aloy access to Aether. Upon Aloy's retrieval of the subordinate function, the visions of the grove regained life, and the vision of unity that changed Hekaro's life reactivated. For the Tanakh who witnessed it, the vision was the ultimate vindication of Hekaro's aspirations, and they gave their salute to the chief. After this, she makes her way back to the lab to give ether to Gaia. Gaia informs her that she detected a transmission on the Eleuthia frequency, another subordinate of Gaia. She gives the coordinates of the transmission to Aloy so she can head towards the source and find out where it is coming from. Varl and Aren decide to go with her on her journey. As they reach the mentioned coordinates in the snowy mountains, they find a zenith fighting a bunch of Tenekith tribe members, resulting in the death of all of them. After that the group explores the surrounding area and discovers a tunnel that leads to the bottom of the mountain. Aren stays back to cover while Varl and Alloy head inside the tunnel to search for Eleuthia. Inside, they find Elizabeth's clone Beta's body in a capsule with a holographic message conveying that she escaped the zeniths, and that they have three subordinates of Gaia with them now but that is useless to them since Beta stole their Gaia backup. The group gets out of the tunnel, and Alloy discovers a weapon used by the locals to kill the zenith. She takes the weapon fragment so that Gaia can replicate it and she can use it against the zeniths. The group then heads back to the lab where Gaia informs Alloy that the weapon fragment self-destructed itself to avoid anyone stealing its secrets. Then Alloy interacts with the clone named Beta. She reveals that the far zenith's colony world on the outside planet was destroyed by a natural disaster, and that is why they have returned to Earth with the mission of using Gaia to wipe off everyone from this planet and start clean. Aloy asks Beta to assist them with her knowledge and skills and she agrees. After that Alloy heads towards the ruins of Las Vegas, where she meets Moreland and his crew, a group of divers that scavenge items from underwater. He reveals that the ruins are flooded somehow and to go far underwater, Moreland asks her to retrieve the Mark II's air tube in the water as well as the locations of machine herds for her to hunt. When she returned, Moreland prepares the diving mask for Aloy. Once done, he questioned what she was looking for in Dune Hollow. She answered that she was seeking the entity that caused the flood, which surprised him, as he assumed his crew caused it. He began recalling a flash of red when the flood started, which Aloy felt was helpful. Afterwards, the Osirum collected as many embers as they could find and returned to the surface while Aloy retrieved Poseidon. Back up top, they were greeted by holograms dancing in the night sky, far beyond anything Moreland had even dreamed of. As they were rejoined by Aloy, Moreland remarked that this was beyond his wildest dreams and thanked her for making it possible. After this, Aloy heads back to the lab and interacts with Gaia to know her next tasks. Aloy then heads towards the ruins of San Francisco, where she meets a tribe by the name of Quen. One of the tribe members named Alva, explains to Aloy that her tribe is facing crisis due to natural disasters, and Alloy agrees to help her retrieve important data that can free her tribe from the crisis. Aloy then explains she was looking for Test Station Ivy in search of Gaia's subordinate. Alva guides her through the ruins, until the two women then made their way through the tunnels and past machines until they reached a control center, where they accidentally activated a biomass conversion device that destroyed the vegetation in the courtyard ahead. Aloy explained to Alva that it was a creation of the the old people, and what ultimately wiped them out. This revelation distressed Alva, who despaired that she hadn't found anything of value to bring back. Aloy assured her they had similar goals, and that her own mission would grant Alva access to the greenhouse's data. Once they made their way out of the control center, the pair were attacked by a dreadwing, which they worked together to destroy. Aloy then used the software module to create a vine cutter for the metal flower blocking access to Demeter. Once she collected the subordinate function, Alva was able to access the central server of the data core and found the data she needed to get rid of the agriculture crisis in her tribe. Suddenly, they were attacked by an arrow from Quen reinforcements, forcing Aloy to take cover. Alva managed to get them to stand down, identifying Aloy as Elizabeth Sobek reborn and letting her return back to the Gaia lab. Back at the lab, with the help of Beta's knowledge on one of the former subordinates Hephaestus, Gaia is ready to capture Hephaestus with the help of other subordinates. She asks the group to take her to an abandoned cauldron in a desert with two energy cores so she can trap Hephaestus. Before Alloy leaves, Gaia informs her that Hephaestus has written Alpha Clearance out of its access module. The only option is to obtain Ted Faro's Omega Clearance from his bunker Thebes, located somewhere in San Francisco. Aloy then heads out to search for the mentioned place, she reaches Quen's tribe and asks them for directions towards Faro's tomb, only to learn that Alva is trapped at the same place along with some soldiers and they are trapped between hostile machines.
Aloy makes her way to the, the area of Thebes and rescues Alva. The Quen tribe's leader called CEO along with his assistant Bohai and his soldiers arrive at the scene to assist Aloy reach the tomb of Todd Pharaoh, the creator and founder of the organization which built the weaponized machines, leading to the extinction of human life on Earth. CEO reveals that he is the descendant of Todd Pharaoh and he forces Alloy to enter the Thebes with him so they can save the world together. As they reach the bottom of the tomb, Alloy discovers that in order to be immortal, Ted Pharaoh mutated himself and has now become a mindless monster trapped in the power room. She also learns that Pharaoh has developed a security protocol to melt the facility in case of his death. Meanwhile, the CEO arrives and finally get through the door. Ignoring Alloy's warning, the CEO enters the power room and sees Ted's mutated form. Horrified, he orders his guards to burn the abomination and kill the other two witnesses, Aloy and Alva. As Aloy and Alva fight off their attackers, the safeguard protocol activates, and Thebes begins to crumble around them. While the two escape, the other Quen inside aren't so lucky, and the CEO is crushed beneath the head of a crumbling pharaoh statue. Once they reach the outside, a bewildered Bohai demands answers about the CEO. When Alva claims that the CEO died to help uncover Thebes' secrets, Bohai scoffs at the obviously false answer and warns the two that further lies will result in their death. Fortunately, Aloy's more accurate account satisfies him, especially when she tells him they found something that will help the Quen tribe. Alva then joins Aloy's group and they both travel back to the base. At the base, Beta refuses to go with Aloy and Gaia as she is afraid she will be captured again by the Zeniths, but Aloy persuades her and she agrees. The group then reach the cauldron and Gaia begins her process to capture Hephaestus. As the process begins, Hephaestus resists and calls in hostile machine beasts to protect itself. After Alloy and her group beats the defending machines, Beta merges Hephaestus with Gaia. They are soon attacked by the Zenith's leader Gerard and his lieutenant Tilda and enforcer Eric. Aloy is injured while Eric kills Varl and takes Beta with her, but Tilda rebels against Gerard and rescues Alloy and brings her to a safe place. Upon waking up, Alloy interacts with Tilda and she explains that she was romantically involved with Elizabeth and regretted leaving her. Having been inspired by Aloy, she wishes to stop Far Zenith. She further reveals that Sillens has been supporting the Tanakh rebels to use them against the Zeniths. Aloy refuses to sacrifice the Tanakh and instead defeats Regala herself after thwarting the latter's final attack on Hekaro. Aloy spares Regala's life and in return asks her to assist her in the battle against the Far Zenith. Regala agrees and this is when an intruder joins them claiming to have brought a message for Alloy. The message turns out to be Sillens, who is mad at her for ruining his plans to use the Tenneth tribe against the Zeniths. Aloy claims she has a better plan and asks Sillens to meet her back at her lab with his special weapons to break the Zeniths armors. Later at the lab, Alloy reveals her alliance with Tilda to Slyons. Both Tilda and Sillens seem to hate each other but agree to work together against the Zeniths. Tilda later briefs everyone about the location of Zenith's facility on an abandoned island and orders everyone to regroup outside of the facility so that she can take them all inside undetected. The group meets at the island and Tilda guides them inside through a tunnel. While they are making their way towards the Zeniths, Regala sacrifices her life to save Alloy and dies. Soon the Zeniths approach and confront Alloy and her group. Sillens break their shield with his weapon, and it causes the nearby aggressive machines to look at them as their enemies and they attack the Zeniths. Gerard and Eric manages to escape back to the shuttle where they are keeping Gaia and Beta, while the rest of the Zeniths are killed by the machines. As Alloy makes her way to the shuttle, she is attacked by Eric. After defeating Eric, Zoe comes and kills him with a spear and taking revenge for hurting her tribe. After this, Alloy reaches the shuttle top where she frees a chained Beta. Beta then searches the facility's files and they learn that Zeniths are not here to take over Earth, but in fact their colony on the Sirius planet was destroyed by Nemesis, a failed project created by the Zeniths to store their memories and emotions, which soon gained consciousness and hacked their systems to destroy their colony. The Zeniths came to Earth to retrieve Gaia to use it to habitat in a new world away from Nemesis. While they are learning about Nemesis, Tilda arrives with killing Gerard. She reveals that it was all her plan to use Alloy and her group to get rid of the other Zeniths so she can escape to a new world with Gaia without any threat from other members. She invites Alloy to come with her, but she resists and engages in a battle against Tilda. After killing Tilda, Sillens arrives and decides to use the shuttle to leave Earth as Nemesis is approaching to destroy it. Alloy asks him to stay back and help them fight Nemesis but Sillens stays on his plan. As he climbs the stairs to the shuttle, the rest of the group arrives and celebrates their victory. Seeing their bond together, Sillens changes his mind and comes back to support Alloy in her next battle against Nemesis. In the final scenes of the game, Earth's environment is restored by Gaia and Alloy along with her group and Beta prepares to face Nemesis. Thanks for watching. 
Please remember to like and subscribe for more epic videos. We will see you at the next one.